what is late? How stressed should you be? I feel like people have finally gotten the memo that you need to apply to law school early. But now we're like shifting into another little realm where people are like, oh my God, is August too late? Is September too late? And I just, I just need to clarify. So let's talk about it. For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney Montgomery. I am the CEO of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, where we specialize in working with first generation and minority law school applicants. Today, we are talking about the September LSAT which is new. I just really want to go on record. It's usually been the August LSAT and the October LSAT. So usually people are like, is October too late? And we have whole questions on that. But now we have an extra opportunity for you to take the LSAT. You can take it in August. You can take it in September. You can take it in October. You can take it in November. My God, right? Oh my goodness. People are stressed. They're like, I don't know. I don't know. Let me, first off, let me just say, no, no, you're fine. Please, please take the September LSAT if you need to. I know that the, you know, the registration has closed for August. So some of you are making that like August, September, August, September. There's no difference. All right. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. You need to take the LSAT when you are ready to take the LSAT. All right. If you're going to take the LSAT in August and get a 162, but you're going to take the LSAT in September and get a 165, that is no brainer. Please take the LSAT in September and get a 165. It is absolutely true that law school operates on a rolling admission cycle. And because of that, you do need to try to apply as early as possible. What I want to really stress is that anytime you apply between September 1 and Halloween, it's basically all the same, okay? Why? Well, one, not every law school actually opens their applications on September 1. And I know that's like the date, but there are legitimate law schools whose applications do not even open until October 1. So then people are like, well, if I don't apply in September, I'm too late. Bruh, some people, you can not apply in September because the applications aren't open yet. And like how incredibly asinine would that be, right? If you think about all of the people that they're admitting, like, no one expects all of the applications to come in the first month that they're open. It, it's it's like, what are they going to, they're going to look at it and they're going to be like, well, she applied in October, so she's getting denied. And everyone else who applies for the entire rest of the application cycle. Do you understand how lit their life would be if they were just like, you know what? Yeah, we're only going to read for one month, guys. And then we're going to wrap it up. You know, go home. Go on vacation. No, that's not what they're doing, right? Obviously, admissions, they read the entire cycle. Now, there are reasons why you want to apply early, but realistically, even sometimes I say even up to Thanksgiving, but certainly up to Halloween, it's pretty negligible. Some schools, even though their applications open on September 1, they aren't starting to read on September 1. So let's say law school A, their application opens September 1 but maybe they don't start reading until October 1. That means essentially if you applied September 5, if you applied September 20, it's the same. It's literally the same. None of you have been read. Solid. Even in October, right? Your September scores will come out in October, which means you can still absolutely apply by Halloween or even the first week of November, and it's totally fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, absolutely fine. Please do not panic. You want to make sure that you are taking the LSAT exam when you are ready, within reason, right? If you're ready is February, let's talk about applying to the next cycle. I'm just going to be very honest with you. That's pretty late in the cycle. You won't get your scores until March. I mean, you're not doing yourself any favors. But I want you guys to always understand there's nuance. You guys are going to be lawyers, right? Um, and as lawyers, you need to know that there's no black and white. Everything is like a million shades of gray. The like best lawyerly answer is it depends. Like lawyers never say something. Clients be like, can I do this? Can I do that? And lawyers are like, well, it depends. Okay. Uh, we as a profession are not very absolute. And so you need to approach the law school application process with some of that nuance. If you are a student that is applying truly below the medians, both medians, you do want to try to get your application in as early as possible. October is still fine, especially if you're going to be able to raise your September LSAT score. If you're a person applying way above the medians, 
also still fine, right? Um, you can apply by October, you can apply by November, it's okay. You want to try in this season though to make sure that you are not rushing any part of your application because you still have time to properly plan, right? You want to prepare properly, you want to perfect your planning, and you cannot operate when you're operating from a space of lack, a space of rush, a space of hurry, a space of scarcity. When you have the scarcity mindset, I don't have enough time. Scarcity mindset, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta hurry up and do these things. Then you don't do things well. That is when you end up with a rushed application and there's no reason to rush. Sometimes people rush because they legitimately do not have enough time. Like they are starting the outside prep in September. That's dangerous, please don't do that. And then they feel rushed because they literally don't have enough time. But some people feel rushed because of an artificial sense of stress. And that is what I see a lot happening right now. We have this artificial sense of stress because you feel like you don't have enough time. But in reality, July, August, September, there are four months to between now and Halloween. <laughs> that is enough time for you to work on your essays in a relaxed, peaceful, organized manner. If you need guidance or help, you know we're right here to make it an organized, peaceful, <laughs> stress-free process. That's enough time to break that process down into bite-sized chunks that you can do well. That is enough time for you to study for the LSAT exam. Now, some people do need more than three or four months. Some people need six months or 12 months. You know yourself, you know where you are. If you haven't taken a diagnostic exam, today's a really good day to do that or tomorrow. This is like definitely the time. And then you have time to come up with a study plan. Some of you are like, I need to go up 10 points. You have time to do that. Some of you are like, I need to go up five points and I don't know if I should take the September LSAT. Please, you get your five points, okay? Get these coins. Because all that is going to do is increase your chances for scholarship and merit aid. And you don't want to rush that for no reason, okay? You always have to do a cost benefit analysis. What are the harms of me waiting an extra month to submit my application? This changes, right? If you are in December and you're saying, what are the harms of me waiting till January? That is a very different conversation than if you're in September and you're saying, what are the harms of me waiting till October? Okay. What are the benefits of me waiting one more month? All right. So if we're like here um, and you've got like two hands that are looking at each other, the harm of waiting one month uh, from September to October, maybe a little harm. Probably no harm, but maybe let's say it's a little harm. The potential benefits for some of you to get your essays together, to get your score together, of waiting from September to October is huge. All right, there's way more benefit for waiting one more month than there is harm. And so, as a lawyer, I'm always trying to mitigate risk, and I feel like this is a risk I'm willing to take because the benefits are so much better or potentially so much higher than the potential harm, okay? Now there, there may be, like when we get to January and February, right? Or two months, right? What is the harm of waiting from January to March? Big harm, huge harm. <laughs> what is the potential benefit? And I always say this and I'll say this when we get there. Some of you are not gonna change your study habits. So like realistically, your score is probably not going to go up if you're not going to change your study habits or get new study tutor, right? So if you're saying, I'm not going to do anything different, I just want to see again in two months what happens, potential benefits, pretty low, potential harm, pretty high, right? But right now, you have so much time to change your study habits, to get a new tutor, to enroll in test prep, right? I, I mean, I, I talk to students sometimes and they're like, I just can't get this LSAT thing together. And I'm like, okay, what prep are you using? I'm not. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to do about that, right? Like, <laughs> use prep, and then maybe your test will go up, right? Maybe it won't, Like, right? There's a lot of mitigating factors, but we have to at least try. It's like if I'm saying, if I just, it would be like if I were to buy a piano. I have a piano downstairs. If I'm buying the piano and I'm sitting at the piano and I'm just like, man, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play the piano. 
don't know how to play. And then it's like, you know, you come to me a year later and you're like, Sydney, how's piano going? And you're like, oh, I don't really know how to play. And then you go, oh, well, yeah, have you taken lessons? And I'm like, no. No, I haven't taken any lessons. Oh, do you have a piano teacher? No. I don't. Okay. Well, how did you expect to learn how to play the piano? I don't know. I just thought if I just sat and just kept pressing the keys, I would eventually learn how to play the piano. But you're not gonna just, yeah, you're not just gonna learn. And some people teach themselves how to play the piano. Um, but most people don't. Most people don't. Most people need lessons of some kind. Same thing with the LSAT exam. Some of you need lessons from a tutor, from a class, from whatever, right? Um, and you want to have that time to invest in yourself. So you do have time. You have four months between now and October 31st uh, to, well, not if you're taking the September LSAT, right? Uh, so maybe like, you know, you have maybe July, you have August, you have part of September, so two and a half months. And some of you, you might want to take the October LSAT. And eh, spoiler alert, the October LSAT will be okay too. I usually tell students to plan for September because that way, if you're not ready, you can push to October versus planning for October. And if you're not ready, you end up pushing to November, right? I like to have a backup plan that makes me feel good. The other thing is that you will probably end up registering for two different LSAT exams at the same time. Because the way that it works, you will not get your September LSAT score before the October LSAT registration deadline. Meaning you will have to register for both September and October if you want the option of taking the September and having the October LSAT as a backup. It is not fair. It is not great. You may end up not needing to sit for the October LSAT and losing some money. I wish I had a better solution for you, but that's just kind of how it is. But if you are someone that says, well, I want to be able to take September and October, then you may need to purchase two different LSAT sittings, unfortunately. Same thing honestly, with October and November, same thing with August and September. They're just so close, August, September, October, November, that like, that's just going to be kind of the way it is. So guys, just remember that you're not alone. You're, you're literally never alone. I am always here. Um, and you've got people, you've got community. If you need community, make sure that you are plugged into our Barrier Breakers Facebook group. We love community. I can't wait to talk with you and meet with you and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.